Praise the Lord, everybody. God is truly in the blessing business. And we are grateful to him this morning for all of his goodness, for all of his grace, and for all of his mercy toward each and every one of us. Church House of Ministries, Lats and I greet you this morning in the joy of Jesus. Those who are watching by social media, we hope that you've tuned in in expectation that God is going to bless you in a mighty special way. So this morning we are grateful to God again for all of you being here and I believe that God's going to bless us in a special way. We thank all of the families who are visiting with those, uh, fa the ones who were baptized this morning. We had six candidates. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. And so we're so thankful. We're so grateful. And we thank God for their families being here to worship with us on this morning. We are, our youth is going to be doing a big portion of the service today. And uh, we've been celebrating black history for in February. Of course, we celebrate it every day. Uh, but uh, this is Black History Month. So we've been having special segments. And uh, today, our young people are going to be doing some special things. So you're in the right place at the right time. This morning, we're going to have our prayer by Shania Canty and our scripture reading by Anthony Pitts III, AJ. And then our praise team will lead us into praise and worship. Let's receive them by saying amen. Can we give God a hand clap for this choir? Amen. That I'm glad I've assembled. Amen. get to church safely. Lord, I'd like to thank you for the musicians, the choir, yes. and the pastor. Thank you for allowing us to get here, allowing us to go to bed and wake up this morning. Um, Lord, I pray that the word that the pastor gives us sits and we're able to, it helps us to guide us this week. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for allowing me to do this, allowing God for pastor to preach this morning. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good morning. Today I'll be reading from the International Children Bible Translation of Psalms 139, verse 13 through 17. Please stand. You made my whole being. You formed me in my mother's body. I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful. I know this very well. You saw my bones being formed as I took shape in my mother's body. When I, when I was put together there, you saw my body as it was formed. All the days planned for me were written in your book before I was one day old. God, your thoughts are precious to me. They are so many. And it is so God's word for God's people. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. Praise team. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We just come to give him worship and praise this morning. For what a mighty God that we serve. Did he wake you up this morning? Yeah. He started you on your way, right? Didn't he start at you with activity of your limbs, with a sound mind? That's enough to give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. For somebody didn't wake up this morning, but God saw fit to allow us to see another day. So we give him glory, we give him praise, and we give him honor. Amen.
worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Oh Lord. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus. the rising from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the sun. Jesus is worthy he is worthy Jesus is worthy he's worthy Somebody ought to praise him. Praise him. Oh, Lord. Praise him. Mm. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, my Lord, my Jesus. Savior, my Master. Hallelujah. Savior. He's worthy. God is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Can I get just one witness this morning that know that God is worthy to be praised? And how do I know? Because in 1996, I tried Jesus and he was all right with me. Hallelujah. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried my master? Yeah. He's all right this morning. And I'm so glad about it. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? He's alright. Have you tried Jesus? He's alright. Have you tried my master? He's alright. Have you tried Jesus? He's alright. 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 He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Oh, all right, all right. 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 Put your hands together.
Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Truly this morning, it's a blessing to be here. God bless you, praise team. Amen. At this time, we would like to welcome all of our visitors. If you're here and it is your very first time visiting with us, we're going to ask you to stand. But before that, I certainly would like to recognize Senator Dion Tedder and his lovely wife. Would you all stand? He's going to be our speaker for today. He's come to encourage our young people, and we're very proud of him. Thank you so very much. Do we have any other friends?
first time visitors, for your first time being in one of our worship experiences, if it's your first time, would you just stand? You don't have to say anything. We just want to recognize you. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. And I pray today that the Lord will bless you in a mighty special way for being here. We appreciate you. And Church House of Ministries, Lance and I greet you and I welcome all of our members and all of our visitors who normally come. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord because God is good and his name is worthy to be praised. At this time, we are going to take a few minutes to, uh, to have some presentations and to give some awards and just kind of honor our heritage just a little bit here. Um, at this time, we're going to ask the choir if they will lead us in the Black National Anthem. We would ask that you stand at this time, and then we'll be in the hands of uh, Dr. Andrea Hampton Mills, who will have our children give a oratorical presentation, and then our awards in that order. Let's receive the choir by saying amen.
to be in front of you all today, but I need an excited looking crowd. Right. So let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. That's what I'm talking about. So although at our church, the Church House of Ministries Worldwide, we celebrate our heritage 365, is that right? Amen. But since our country has decided that this is the month that we celebrate African American history, we too have been very deliberate all month making sure that we celebrate our heritage. We started our month with one of our very own published authors. I'm already claiming it, Dr. Zacchaeus Kennard. He started us off with his self-written poem reminding us of why we are black history. Then, on the second Sunday, we had our 89-year-old brother Goodwin Turner. He ate it up, as the kids say, on that Sunday. Told us everything about why we celebrate what we did. As the kids say, he left no crumbs. He ate it up. He ate it up on that day. Then, on last Sunday, we had our very own colonel come to us, full regalia, as a symbol of the battles that we have all won and reminded us of why we are black history. But this morning, we are going to have some young ladies come forward because our pastor has been preaching a word this month as well. She's been letting us know and reminding us about the words that we speak over our lives and how they control our lives. And we've been following that up in our Sunday school classes and in our children's church. We've been reminding our children about why they are worthy. We've been reminding them that they are what God says they are and not what the world says they are. And so today, we're gonna to be welcoming some of our queens to come before us. And they're going to talk to you about why they are black history, why we are black history. So if my queens will go ahead and make your way to the front. Let's give it up. I am black history. I constantly work by myself. I am black history because I add value to the world and the world would not be the same without me. I am black history. I face my challenges each day and I breathe in happiness and release worry. I am black history. I am fully capable of achieving my dreams. I, 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 am, I dare to follow my dreams. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. I am black history because my spirit is centered in love. I empower others with positive energy. I am black history because I, because I add value to my life every day. I add, po I, I will continue to, add to, to grow. I am black history. I use the world to inspire me, and I always think of new things to try. I am black history. I live my truth every day. I am enough. I am worthy. I am black history. I love myself fully. I radiate confidence, self-respect, and inner harmony. I am black history uh, because I am working to build a good future for all. I am black history because I am optimistic. I am not perfect. I will make mistakes, but I'm willing to learn. Oh, 
Black History. Join us together. One, two, three. We are Black History. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. At this time, we're going to continue to honor our youth because today is Youth Empowerment Sunday. We are making sure that our youth know that they do not have to depend on the world to validate them. So today we are making sure that they know that they are empowered. So at this time, if my team would please join me, we're going to now recognize a lot of our academic achievements. And parents, I want you to know that at our church, we don't just honor honor roll. Yes, that's important. We know that children, we want them to make all A's, we want them to make all B's but we also want them to achieve. We want them to strive hard. So remember, you don't have to just turn in your child's report card because they made the honor roll. We want to recognize them if they made improvements. We want to recognize them if they came to school every day, because you know, some folks don't like to come to work. Come so we're trying to teach the children, go to school. So please make sure that you always turn in everything so that we can recognize our youth. So we do have some specific youth that we're going to recognize today. But then at the end of service, if you will, please meet us in the back. We do have a special gift for every child that's here today. So before I call out each individual youth, I need you all to help me because I need to make sure that our children know that we love them. I need them to know that they are worthy and I need them to know that they can get an applause and a positive applause. So it's Youth Empowerment Sunday. So I need y'all to join me. We giving it up for our babies, our youth. Let's do it. These are our children. These are our kids. These are our babies. These are our children. These are our children. And at, that, at this time, we are now going to recognize our students for their academic achievements. Our first young lady that we would like to recognize is Miss Shania Canty. Shania is a high school student. I'm taking my time today. I'm not rushing on our kids. She is a high school student. Not only is she taking high school classes, she is duly enrolled. What that means is she's taking high school classes and she's in college. And guess what? She's nailing it. All A's. Let's give it up for Shania. <laughs> Next, we have one of our future soldiers that we are going to recognize. He's in JROTC at North Charleston High School. He has the most positive spirit. He's always optimistic. Love him dearly. That's my boy, Eric Collins. Come on up, Eric. Come on, Eric. Yeah. Come on, Eric. Eric strives hard every day. I love him so much. Go, Eric. Yeah. Next, this is one of our young queens that was just up there, up here, letting her know about her radiant energy. She is on the AB honor roll. She is just a wonderful young lady. Got baptized this morning as well. Miss Corinne McKellar. Yeah. This next young lady is a high school student as well. She doesn't just work at school. She's on the color guard. She's standing at the door right now ushering because not only is she serving at school, she's serving in our ministry. That is Miss Chantel Montgomery. <laughs> a, B, honor roll. That's what I'm talking about, yes. And not only that, you see, she's she taking her stroll of fame. Come on, girl, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Strong family ties, expectations make a difference. Because the next person that we're going to call up lives in the same household with this young lady. And that is Mr. William Montgomery. Come on up, Mr. William. Okay. Rocking that bow tie, he strives hard. And he got baptized this morning too. And if he wasn't a guy, 
My star out in here will get this. If he wasn't a guy, because I would, I, I would think he was an AKA because it's always a serious matter with this dude. Look at him, look at him, it's always a serious matter. <laughs> business, he's all about the business, look at him. <laughs> Our next young lady, a, B, on the road. I teach middle school, so I know it's not easy to maintain your grades and keep your focus. This young lady's in middle school nailing it. Miss Janiah Park Parsons Crawley, A, B, on the road. Our next young man is the, the Tyreek Savon Gilliard High School young man. Staying on the honor roll, he may not be here today. He was trying to get off, so it looks like not only is he doing it right in school, he's working, but let's still give it up for him because he's a great young man. Our next young lady is a high school student. She's also a dual enrolled young lady, so she's taking college courses as well, nailing it, representing the body correctly. She may be also working today, but we still want to recognize her, and that is Miss Naomi Tomlin. Again, we thank you so much for allowing us to take the time to recognize our youth. People love to say, oh, the youth are our future. No, our youth are now. Right. Yeah, They're gonna be taking care of me in the future, but if we don't build them up now, we are gonna be in trouble. So let's just continue to encourage our youth. I wanna thank our leadership, our pastor, because she realizes how important it is. Our bishop realizes how important it is, and we, recognize how important it is. So one more time, I'm gonna count the three and I want us to say we are black history. One, two, three. We are black history. Yes, thank you. I tell you what, we're very proud of our young people. And um, so they got a monetary um, gift this morning as well as um, uh, Pastor Ron always gets a book or something for them to read and their certificates, and we're very proud of them. And so parents, those of you who didn't turn in your children's information this quarter, please do so next quarter. We want to know what they're doing. We want to applaud them. At this time, our praise dancers are coming. Um, let's receive them by saying amen, the little angels. Wait in the water, wait, wait. 
Amen. Thank you all very much. God is so good, and we're grateful for his many, many blessings toward us on this morning. Just in the way of announcements, and we're getting ready to be inspired by what I believe to be a word from the Lord. Uh, we are so grateful this morning, again, for our young people and all their achievements, and I'm just thankful to God for every one of you members of this church. You are the most wonderful people in the whole world, and I'm just honored to be your pastor. Amen. I thank God for you. So right immediately after service, we do have a little snack for you, and then we have about 69 of us going down to the International um, African American Museum. So we're very excited about that today. So we're going to have a really good trip, and thanks to all of you who uh, signed up to go. And we are paying for all the seniors and all the little ones, and those of you who make big money between 18 and 62, you got you, right? All right, we, 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 we're so thankful, we're thankful. We're, we're gonna have a really good time, and you're gonna be inspired. I've been a couple of times where there's a lot of good things to see and learn, and I think, you know, we gotta know where we came from so that we know where we are and how we can push forward. I am very uh, thankful that on yesterday, we had our moms on a mission prayer breakfast. Oh, it was amazing, it was amazing, yeah. Um, we had over 70 moms in here uh, learning more about how to be better mothers, uh, about the issues that sometimes we deal with with our children, uh, mental health issues, anxiety, depression, different things, and uh, then we had some great speakers, and our prayer warriors were there, and we prayed, and I don't know about y'all, but I left there kind of like on cloud nine, right? It was amazing, and I know that we're going to see some great changes from what, what happened here on yesterday, so God bless, God bless them. Um, uh, the women's department for partnering with um, Inspirations by Loretta. We had a wonderful time. I do want to say that uh, our next Authentic Men's Breakfast is going to be at New Way, and that's going to be on March 9th. And uh, I tell you what, men, those of you who have not been to one yet, I'm telling you, you got to go. Uh, Colonel, stand up for us and uh, see him at the church. Um, it has changed lives. Uh, our men are learning how to be who they really are because they are kings and they are princes and they are wonderful. And we thank God for them. They're, they're learning uh, their true purpose as a man and how to be good dads and good husbands and they're just being inspired and lifted up, and we're very proud of that. So uh, this is our sixth one uh, that we've had. Breakfast starts at 8.30, and then um, the session is from 9 to 11. So we hope that you all will be a part of that. It will bless you, I promise you. Um, and then we're grateful that uh, our church anniversary is going to be April 29th, 21 years that the Lord has blessed us. I am so grateful to God. So I'm, I'm going to need you. Everybody, visitors and members, please put that on your calendars. We need you to come celebrate with us the goodness of Jesus. Amen. And then on March 9th, we are going to have Tiana's Closet here again this year. Last year, we served almost 60 young women. We realized that going to the prom can be a little expensive. So these ladies in the church and visitors have brought in their wonderful gowns and bridesmaid dresses that they can't wear anymore or been trying to hold on to. You know how we say I'm gonna lose weight and I'll get, in, get into it. Uh, but they've been bringing them in with jewelry and shoes and uh, it's, it's a blessing to the community and we hope that you will continue to bring your donations and then we do need volunteers for March 9th as well. The, the gymnasium will be set up like a, like a retail store and they get to try them on and take pictures and uh, it's just been amazing. Uh, it's a, gr a great outreach so thank you for, for what you do. God is so good. All right, so we thank God for all of the announcements. I thank you for being here today. We're very honored to to have uh, in our presence uh, our Senator Dion Tedder and his lovely wife. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for them, and uh, he's going to share with us in just a little bit. But before that, we thank God for um, 
allowing us to bring a gift to him for the ministry of giving. And I, I, I love giving because I know what the Bible says, that if we give, he promised that he would give it back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You want to be blessed by God, then you remember him as he blesses you. So here at the Church House of Ministries, we have several ways that you can give. We thank God for all the things that we do to bless our members, but also this community. We have a food bank that uh, people come twice a week and they're lined around the, the, the uh, church sometimes, but we're grateful that we're able to serve. Here at the church house, uh, if you want to do our online giving, which is GiveLify, this is a really good time to pause and do that. Some of you may want to give by Cash App, which is dollar sign church house Latson, dollar sign church house Latson. And then some of you may have gotten an envelope as you came in the door, or maybe you need one now. And if you do, our ushers will, if you just raise your hand, the ushers will bring that to you. We have some people up front. So we thank you this morning for your giving. If you give, the Bible says he'll give it back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, that he would give. He would cause men to give to you. So at this time, if you're going to bring your gift to the Lord, we ask that you stand to your feet and that you face the, the wall. You'll be directed by the ushers, and you'll go back to your seat down the center aisle. Uh, we thank you this morning for your gift. Our young man is here for our scholarship and our emerging leaders. And our general offering is the other ladies. We thank you so much. Thank you for your giving on today. God bless you.
Moshe. That's her first time leading a song here. Great job. Great job. I pray now that you will open your hearts and mind and to receive a word from the Lord and be inspired and encouraged. Um, our brother Zacchaeus Kynard is coming for the introduction of our speaker. And when he comes before you, after the selection by the choir, led by Deacon Canty, I know what prayer can do. How many of you know what prayer can do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. After they sing this song and the introduction of the speaker, the next voice that you will hear this morning will be that of our encourager for today, Senator Dion Tedder. Let's receive them by saying amen. amen. Good morning to you all. Good morning. I'm Zacchaeus Kennard, and I've actually had the uh, pleasure of an opportunity to meet Mr. Tedder in person a few times before today. So, Senator Dion Tedder is a servant leader in our community and a fierce advocate for our children. A first-generation college student, he graduated magna cum laude from the Honors College at South Carolina State University. with a BA in political science. Furthering his education, he graduated from the University of South Carolina School of Law with his Juris Doctor. Tedder has spent much of his life in public service. While a student at SC State, he secured an internship working in the office of the late Senator Edward Ted Kennedy, where he assisted on the Health, Education, Labor, and Pension, or HELP Committee. He was very active on campus, serving on student government. He was a member of the Marching 101 and the Delta, I'm sorry, Beta Delta chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. <clears throat> In law school, he served as a guardian ad litem, representing the best interests of neglected and abused children. After law school, Tedder served as a judicial law clerk to the Honorable L. Casey Manning in Columbia, South Carolina, which allowed him to gain a unique understanding of legal matters from both sides of the aisle. Tedder is an attorney at RPWB Law Firm, where he focuses on personal injury, criminal defense, and mass tort cases. He has been recognized as a top 40 under 40 with the National Black Lawyers, a 2022 Super Lawyer Rising Star, and top 10 under 40 with the National Academy of Criminal Defense Attorneys. <laughs> Tedder was elected to the South Carolina House of Representatives for District 109 in 2020, representing Charleston and Dorchester counties. In his first year in office, he passed legislation establishing Historically Black College and University, or HBCU Day, in South Carolina. Yeah. HBCU students across the state have gained internships with legislators at the State House. Most notably, he was recently elected to the State Senate for Charleston and Dorchester counties, yeah. Yeah. thus making him the youngest senator in the state. He remains active in the community as he volunteers with various organizations and serves as a mentor for youth in the community. Tedder has been a leader in the fight for protecting public education, increasing affordable housing options, and criminal justice reform. He is married to Dr. Jillian Broughton, who is a dentist in the Charleston area and a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Tedder is an active and proud member of the Beta Kappa Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated and a member of Royal Missionary Baptist Church located in North Charleston, South Carolina, where his pastor is Reverend Dr. Isaac J. Holt, Jr. Without further ado, after this election, please welcome none other than Senator Dion Tedder. 
All right, all right. All right, let's keep that same energy going. As a matter of fact, y'all can stand up and join me because we all know what prayer can do. Did and still doing. Let's go, choir. Let's go, congregation. Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. Y'all know what prayer can do. It's already done, and it's still doing.
the saints say amen. amen I know I know I know I know what prayer can do amen if somebody know what prayer can do put your hands together if somebody know what prayer can do can I get a witness put your hands together because I know I know I know I know what prayer can do amen amen Y'all having church this morning. <laughs> let's, let's give another hand for, for our youth. Let's give another hand for our youth. Beautiful performances. Uh, congratulations to those that received awards. And continue to be great because you are great and you are black history. And so, good morning. I think it's still morning. Uh, it's an honor and privilege for me to stand before you today and bring greetings to the pastor, ministers, and congregation. Thank you for having me today. Before I begin, I do want to recognize my beautiful wife who is here with me, Dr. Jillian Broughton Tedder. As you heard, uh, she is a dentist in the Charleston area. Uh, family is from Cross, South Carolina. <laughs> and uh, the good book, book of Proverbs tells us that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Well, I'm here to tell you that since I found her, God has been pouring his favor. I know, I know, I know. I know what prayer can do. Amen. So today as we celebrate Black History Month, we not only celebrate those who have paved the way for us, but we celebrate ourselves. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream, and his dream is still being carried out today, many years later. So I want to talk to you about your dream. I encourage you all to have a dream. And in pursuing that dream, there are some things I want you to remember. To be confident in who you are. Don't let your journey, don't let the journey of your dream hinder your attitude. Because your journey is different. And dare to dream big. So when you have a dream, you need to be confident in who you are. Today in the world we live in with all of the advancing technology, TV shows, and even in our music, we are told how we should look, how we should dress, and how we should speak, and what we should be doing based on what's popular in the moment. We see, increasing, we see the increase in bullying in our schools and our neighborhoods because we don't look a certain way or we don't wear certain clothing. You may have gotten picked on in school, or you may know someone who's gotten picked on themselves, and it makes them feel self-conscious and doubt themselves. I remember at a time in middle school and high school wanting to be like the cool people, and, and just because they were considered popular at that time. But, and there were times I felt like I wasn't good enough, but it was all in my mind. And today, when I see those same people that I wanted to be like back then, I thank God for creating me the way I am. So just because something appears good at the time doesn't mean it's good for you. We have to remember to be confident in ourselves. We are all different and unique in our own way that God did that on purpose. In, in Psalm 139, 14, it says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and, my, and that my soul knoweth right well. 
But if we go further to verse 15 and 16, it says, You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. This is a reminder and confirmation that you are just the way you're supposed to be. You are doing the things that you're supposed to do and in the time that you're supposed to do it. Which takes me to my next point. Don't let the journey of your dream hinder your attitude. What does that mean? Well, sometimes we get impatient and upset because things don't go the way we want them to or when we want them to. And when your attitude changes, your action changes. So be patient in knowing that your journey is different from the person next to you and that God may take you through some different detours to reach your destination. So I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. my journey is different, my journey is different. but we're all moving towards success. Amen. Amen. So I always envisioned success and greatness for myself. What I did not envision was failure. But when I encountered failure, because it does happen, I later realized that failure is a delay, not defeat. I realized that failure is a temporary detour, not a dead end. I know this because I know, I know, I know, I know that prayer works. And also, there's a scripture that has gotten me through the most difficult times in my life. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So there are plans already written for each one of you, and all of you are destined for greatness. And you will prosper and have a future. So dream big, but know that every journey is different. Some will achieve success quicker than others, but always remember the path in which you seek success is unique in your own path. If and when you do hit that temporary detour, remember it's not a dead end, but that experience is there for a reason. You might not understand it at the time, but you can't give up. You must persevere and keep pushing because you, again, are destined for greatness. The Lord may not do it when you want him to, but he'll come in right on time. For example, in 2000, there was a Democratic state senator who decided to run against a longtime Democratic congressman, and he lost by more than 30 points. Later that year in 2000, he decided to go to the Democratic National Convention anyway. He flew there to Los Angeles, but before he could get to the convention, his credit card declined when he was trying to rent a car. He was embarrassed, but his attitude didn't change. Eight years later, at the 2008 Democratic National Convention, people packed into an arena that was overflowing. And that same former state senator who lost in 2000 by 30 points and his credit card was declined, then state senator Barack Obama accepted the nomination to be our Democratic nominee for president of the United States, now the nation's first black president. So again, your journey is unique. Don't compare yourself to others. Also, after being rejected from Duke Ellington School of the Arts in Washington, D.C., Taraji Henson's acting dreams were crushed until her family motivated her to continue following her passion. Again, she didn't let her journey dictate her attitude. So she moved to L.A. as a single mother in hopes of turning her dreams into reality. And then in 2001, she landed a role in what some of you know, uh, John Singleton's Baby Boy. And despite audition after audition, it wasn't until three years later that she earned another a role in the film. Now, with several number one box office films under her belt and an Oscar nomination for her role in The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Henson is proof that in the midst of failure, it takes patience and struggle to reach success. Again, your journey is different. Also, after losing in season three competition of American Idol, Many thought Jennifer Hudson's career was over, proving that it takes more than the disapproval of others okay. to stop her from going after her dream. She auditioned for the film Dream Girls and landed the role of Effie White that led her to win several awards for Best Supporting Actri Actress, including an Academy Award. With a booming acting and singing career, she is now considered to be one of the most successful American Idol contestants to date. Now, mind you, she lost at American Idol, but she's deemed one of the most successful. 
So again, your journey is different. Don't compare to the next person. And here just in South Carolina a few years ago, uh, a circuit court judge, Judge DeAndre Benjamin in South Columbia, South Carolina, she ran for the Court of Appeals, well-qualified black woman, more qualified than her opponent, but she lost that election. She was devastated because she put in hard work. I saw her put in the work, and she was the most qualified. But she continued to serve in her capacity and hold her head high. However, this past year, she was nominated and appointed by President Biden to the United States Courts, uh, Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit, being the second black woman to serve in that role. So again, your journey is different. Delay is not denial. A detour is not a dead end. Neither of those people gave up on their journey and let their journey hinder their attitude. They continued to dream. And there may be some of you who didn't get the grade you wanted in the class or who didn't make the team you tried out for. But take those moments of that temporary detour and build from it. I want to share with you a story that not many people know, a personal story. Um, oftentimes, people tell you about how great they are and how important they are, but they don't talk to you about their failures or temporary detours. And I think it's important to show the entire picture. And I appreciate the young man that introduced me. He gave you the highlights, the successes. And now I'm going to tell you about those temporary detours that got me there. So when I graduated law school at USC, the next step was to take the bar exam. I studied with some classmates over the summer. And all the people I studied with passed, but I didn't. That made me feel like a failure to my family, because they were all counting on me to be the first lawyer in the family. So watching the majority of my classmates get sworn in that summer and go on to achieve great things, I started to feel embarrassed. But I knew I couldn't give up, so I studied again. I prayed, and I took the bar a second time. The second time, I failed it again. Now I'm really embarrassed and devastated, but I kept being reminded of Jeremiah 29, 11. All right. All right. The plans I have for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you, yeah. give you a hope in the future. So I continued to pray, I continued to bunker down and work harder. So at this point, one of my classmates' parents offered me to work part-time at her law firm in Charleston so I could have some income while trying to become an attorney. So I moved to Charleston and worked part-time and I studied again and took the bar a third time and that time I missed it by one point. <laughs> Talk about confused, lost, <laughs> disappointed, sad and embarrassed. For the first time in my life, I actually started to doubt myself. Some people even told me that perhaps being a lawyer was not for me and I should look at a different career. But there was nothing else I wanted to do other than politics and law. Becoming an attorney was part of my dream. Now check this, during the time I took the bar exam, those three times, if you had passed the South Carolina bar, you could only practice in South Carolina. So after that third time, missing it by one point, South Carolina transitioned into what we call the uniform bar exam, what other states do. Um, so I buried myself in the books again. I prayed and I studied. And I went to New York and took the New York bar. Uh, and I passed the New York bar. <laughs> and so, and here how, here's how it all comes back together. Because now South Carolina was adopting the uniform bar and accepting reciprocity from other states. I could be licensed in South Carolina. Not only South Carolina, I passed New York, and then it allowed me, because of my score, to also be licensed in North Carolina. And so had I passed the bar the first, one of the first three times, I would have been only eligible to practice in South Carolina. Had I passed the South Carolina bar the first time, I would have likely started my career in Columbia and not Charleston, where I currently live. Had I not moved to Charleston, I would not have the opportunity to run for the State House in 2020 for the seat I recently held. And if, I had, if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be the youngest state senator now for District 42. So now, as you heard, I've been practicing for seven and a half years, been named top 40 under 40 by national black trial lawyers, named a rising star by super lawyers, married my beautiful wife, and now the youngest state senator in South Carolina. And I did it with God. And I don't say that, and I don't mention that to brag and not be boastful, but it's to tell you that Jeremiah 2911 is real. My journey to success was totally different from my classmates, and my journey is not over. I didn't understand at the time why I kept coming up short, but now I see that had things gone differently, I wouldn't be in the positions I'm in now. So when you feel like you failed at something, don't compare yourself to others. 
Don't allow people to talk you out of your dream. Don't give into the pressure and give up, but persevere, keep pushing, and put in the work knowing that God is with you, that he has a plan for you, a plan for you to prosper, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. And so the last part I'll leave you with is dream big. I hit on this earlier in my previous example. Somebody tried to talk me out of being a lawyer, but I thank God that I did not listen to them because I continued to dream big. And I knew what my dream was. So don't feel discouraged if your dreams seem beyond your capabilities. You were never made to accomplish your dreams alone. Again, I told you that I did all of this with God. So God is with you and will help you succeed in doing his will for your life. So if you have a class that you're struggling with, don't give up. Seek help and ask God to get you through it, but also believe that you will get through it. Yes. And if it's a job that you've applied for and you got rejected, understand that God didn't have that for you. That there's something greater coming down the pipeline. Because your story is different from your neighbor's. And remember verse 16 of Psalm 139. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. So what God has for you is for you. He already knows it. We just have to go through the process. So each day, each of you are destined for success, and the difficult moments will only make you stronger to prepare you for what is to come. So again, be confident. Don't let the journey of your dream hinder your attitude. Understand that your path is your path to success is different from the person sitting next to you. So dream big. God bless you all. And remember that we are... Black history. Thank you. Hey, Amen. Dream big. Continue to dream. And I like that. A temporary detour doesn't mean it's a dead end. You know, I believe that word spoke to all of us today. I know it spoke to me. Because sometimes, you know, when things don't go the way you want it to go, the first thing to do is give up. You can't do it. You can't make it. But you can. Because we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And then I like what he said. I didn't do it by myself. See, when God blesses you, you have to acknowledge that it was God that was on your side. And when you do that, he will continue to bless you. He will continue to elevate you. So God is so good. And Jeremiah 29, that, that's, that's one of my favorite scriptures is too. God knows the plans that he has for each and every one of us. And I want to say to all of you today, you can stand to your feet. Um, there's greatness within you. Um, we are so proud of what God has done for you and we thank you for sharing your story because sometimes like you say people just see you up there they don't know that there are struggles and we all have them so thank you so very much and god bless you and your wife and your future now maybe you were a part of this service today and you heard the songs you heard the word encourage but maybe you don't know this God that Senator Dion talked about. Maybe you have gone to church all your life, but you don't really have that personal relationship with Jesus. He is your Savior and he loves you unconditionally. Yes, for God so loved the world, that means you and me, that he gave his one and only son that if we would only believe in him, that we wouldn't perish we could have an everlasting life and we could live an abundant life while we're here. If you don't know this Jesus, would you, whether you're in this building or you're watching by social media, would you just repeat after me? Would you say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now and I believe that you're God's one and only son, that you died for my sins. Forgive me, Lord for everything I've done wrong. Come into my life and save me. Be with me, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
Lord, I'll live for you the rest of my life. Now, that's a simple prayer, but you can go anywhere from there. We encourage you, if you prayed that prayer, to get into a Bible-believing church, a loving church where you can grow. I'd like to say a prayer for believers at this time. Those of us who already know the Lord and you believe he has plans for you and sometimes we just need more courage and more strength to keep going. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come with humble hearts this morning and we are so grateful to you, God, for who you are. You are God besides you there is no other oh Lord we thank you today for your Holy Spirit that we feel in this place we thank you for the words of encouragement that we received today knowing that there's nothing impossible with you God and knowing that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength Lord I pray that you would stir up the dreams that are in our souls Lord, somebody this morning has given up. Somebody thought they couldn't do it. But we thank you that hope has been renewed today. Somebody is leaving here encouraged, knowing that God is real and that God can help you through anything. Oh, Lord God, we bless your name. We bless your name, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you and I pray today your blessings upon these people. Lord, I pray that you would be with them, Lord. That you would strengthen them and encourage them and empower them, Lord. To reach the, their destiny and to fulfill the plans that you have for each and every one of us, Lord. We thank you today. Oh, Lord, for making us a success. Help us to be willing to hang in there and hold on study and go through the struggle Father we know you're with us Lord I thank you and I ask your blessings upon these people in Jesus name we pray let everybody say amen amen and now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may it rest rule and abide with us now and forever amen Put your hands together and give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord.